I've spent all together approximately 25 years in public service, at the same time raising a family and being involved in personal, private, and business matters. And obviously that stretches you pretty thin, and we intend to save enough time in our lives to smell the roses, so to speak, and change our lifestyle to do other things that we want to do and have wanted to do all our lives. Members of the Henrietta Human Rights Association say they have eyewitness accounts of police brutality. They accuse officers of beating and harassing people they arrest. Last night, representatives of the OSBI attended an association meeting. Association members admit some of the people making the charges against the police have broken the law. But they argue some actions by the police have been intolerable. When I got out, he twisted my arm behind my back, pushed me to the ground had my face in the gravel and against a curbing, he kneed me in the back and then kneed me in the sides, handcuffed me, put me back in the police car. And then they took us to the jail, and as I was standing at the desk, the officer that had me on the ground come in and told me to spread my legs. And I said, no, get a female policeman in here to uh, frisk me. And he kicked me and told me to spread my legs, and I did indeed spread my legs again so he wouldn't kick me again. Henrietta Police Chief Richard Larney says he welcomes the investigation. Larney says his officers will be vindicated. I think they only use whatever force is necessary to overcome the resistance by certain individuals. And today I don't believe we're dealing with the same type of people we were with 20 years ago because now they drink and pop pills and they act different. Bill Ross, Action 4. Had the issue passed, millions of dollars would have become available for the Oklahoma City schools. The money is earmarked for some much needed repairs of older buildings. Re repairs such as floor replacement, electrical rewiring, and replacement of plumbing fixtures. But the election didn't happen today because the wrong date was published in the official notice. It has been rescheduled for March 30th, but Oklahoma City School Superintendent Tom Pezant says the 30-day delay will cost the taxpayers some money. The big cost, of course, is the result of the delay for 30 days and what happens to the increased price of building and construction. And if inflation continues to go at 1% a month in the construction industry, then on a $32 million bond issue, you could be talking as much as $300,000 by the delay of one month. Paisan isn't sure where that money will be made up in repairs, new construction, or maybe some projects will come in under budget. However, he says it is only a costly delay, and he is counting on patrons to pass the issue as soon as they get a chance to vote on it. Ted Brown, Action 4. The Canadian Valley Electric Cooperative held a meeting tonight to explain a 35% rate hike that will make its way to consumers of Canadian Valley over the next two years. The reason for the hike is to help pay for the $400 million coal-fired power plant in Hugo, built by Western Farmers Electric. Canadian Valley is one of the 19 co-ops in Western Farmers. The new plant is expected to begin operating in April, at which time its costs will be seen in higher bills for consumers of Canadian Valley. Even know that Western farmers is going to uh, raise their rates to Canadian Valley by 58 percent. This is not being passed on to the members. All of that, just a percent of it. They will probably be 35 percent passed on to the members eventually, but not this year. 
Although the Hugo plant has been in the works since 1976, some consumers are complaining bills are already too high. I have a 1,400 square foot house and I pay $300 a month and more in a cold or a hot month. 18% more is just outrageous as far as I'm concerned. And people on fixed incomes, I don't know how they're going to come up with that extra money. The plan is to increase rates by about 17% this year and 18% next year. That means that if your average bill is almost $50 now, by 1983 it will be close to $75. Though consumers of Canadian Valley don't like the increase, the plant is built and the cost must be passed on. Carol Lambert, Action 4 in Shawnee. It was just a few days ago when several former OU football players were in town for a fundraiser in Norman. The affair was to benefit families affected by the Star Elementary School explosion. Two of the players were Greg Roberts and David Overstreet. While in Oklahoma, the athletes stayed at a Norman motel. It was also there that a 20-year-old OU co-ed said she was raped repeatedly. She accuses Overstreet and Roberts. Norman police arrested Overstreet today, and he was booked in the Cleveland County Jail on a first-degree rape complaint. He offered no resistance. The other ex Suna Roberts had already been booked before Overstreet was arrested. He arrived from Tampa where he is now playing professional football and turned himself in to authorities. Roberts is also being charged with oral sodomy. The woman told police she met the two football players at a party Saturday night. She said she left the party to go with the two men to a convenience store, but claims they took her to their motel room instead. Judge Preston Trimble allowed the two men to go free on a signature bond even though prosecutors felt the bond should have been set at at least $25,000 each. The judge set a preliminary hearing date for March 17th. If the athletes don't show up for court when ordered, they will be fined up to $5,000 in a two-year jail term. Ed Stewart, action for the Cleveland County Courthouse. The Junior Livestock Show here in Oklahoma City is a way of really furthering the uh, education mm -hmm. of our... About 4,000 young people will gather at the state fairgrounds for the 67th annual 4-H and FFA Livestock Show. It's billed as the largest junior livestock show in the world. There's a lot of livestock shows around over the nation, uh, but many of them have open divisions where adults and uh, older uh, uh, young adults can participate. Paul said on Action 4 AM, that all Oklahoma businessmen are being urged to get involved financially with this year's show. Many of us uh, businessmen uh, that uh, are doing business in Oklahoma City have a farm background, and many of us have participated ourselves in this show 30-something uh, years ago. And it's just good to be able to give back a little bit of that uh, to what we received when we were children uh, participating in that show here in Oklahoma City. By getting involved, Hall means participating in the premium auction. A lot of the youngsters use the money they make selling their animals on their college education. Ben McCain, Action 4.
Witnesses in this overhead crosswalk saw a blur and then heard a loud thump as the victim plunged down from the City National Bank building. The man died instantly as his body crashed under the hood of an Oklahoma City police squad car. A parking enforcement worker was in the process of impounding another car. The apparent suicide jump came as a complete surprise. We had absolutely no, uh, no prior knowledge uh, of a potential jumper. Uh, the police service technician uh, had absolutely no idea what was about to occur. She, in fact, uh, was sitting inside the car when the body struck the car uh, with such impact that the steering wheel injured her leg. Alice Troy was treated and released from a city hospital. The victim has been identified as 20-year-old Jonathan Parks, a serviceman from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Parks was stationed at Fort Sill. Police speculate he may have actually jumped from the top of the crosswalk rather than the building. They have no idea why. Larry Otis, Action 4, downtown Oklahoma City. With two-for-one ticket prices that American and Braniff offered yesterday and today, Will Rogers has been a hubbub of activity. Although their special fare sales will end tonight when ticket counters close, people will again be lining up tonight and in the morning for a contest that Texas International is offering. The first 100 in line will win free airfare to one of six destinations if they present some kind of a bus ticket. And there seems to be a misconception to the fact that they feel they have to go out and buy a bus ticket in order to participate, which is incorrect. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's any facsimile of a bus ticket. If a person wishes to draw a bus ticket and bring it out with them, that, you know, that will be enough for them to be a contestant if they're one of the first 100 that are here in line for the contest that begins at 11 o'clock Sunday. Tomorrow's contest is only a one-time promotion to get TI's new discount program off the ground. The airline will continue matching bus fare prices throughout the year. There are, however, several restrictions that will be placed on these new discount tickets. Bus lines, just as the airlines, have felt recent economic pressure and have resorted to incentives such as two-for-one fares to increase passenger booking. Those surprised at the new competition from TI, John Cook doesn't feel threatened. Well, no, it doesn't make me mad. Uh... I think it's it's really kind of funny uh, the way I look at it because uh, I don't see any way they can do anything but lose on a deal like this. As for the winner, it seems safe to say that consumers are holding the trump card in this case. Carol Lambert, Action 4. They straggled in between 6 o'clock last night and 9 o'clock this morning. Some strummed and sang away the hours. Others penned letters to loved ones. No matter how they passed the time, all 100 contestants had come to Will Rogers World Airport for the same reason, to take advantage of Texas International Airlines' so-called bus fares. The airline promised to give away 100 free tickets to customers willing to camp out. I was just starting my vacation today from work, and this deal came up, and I'm going to take my kids to Washington, D.C. on these tickets. And uh, and how much is your family going to be able to fly to Washington, D.C. for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I wanted to get down to the sun in Florida, and all my friends here are getting together and going to the same spot and have a good weekend on, on the Texas International's free flight. Take advantage of it. We're poor students. <laughs> we call our official winners of Texas International's promotional to announce our new bus fare. The airline claims its fares are cheaper than bus tickets to certain cities. But it's obvious Texas International's enemy in this battle is not the bus companies. TI is engaged in a price war with several other regional airlines. A war where the consumer is the real winner. Scott Wallace, Action 4 at Will Rogers World Airport.
It's been a long time since drivers have seen regular gas for 99 cents a gallon. It's been even longer since they've seen five stations in a row under the dollar mark. It is what would appear to be a war in the streets, and the battlefield is Britain Road. It all started about a week and a half ago when drivers in Newcastle were buying gas for 89 cents. The gas in here began dropping their prices little by little. The Onan was told to keep pace, but the manager says it's not a war. No, sir, we're just trying to be competitive. Just stay with everybody else. Other stations have started keeping pace, and no one can say how long the low prices will last. For the time being, drivers aren't hurting from the situation, and in fact, they're taking advantage of it. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4. The Oklahoma City Council is being asked once again about the possibility of one day having a Citizens Review Board to oversee police actions. Members of the Oklahoma Alliance Against Racism and Political Repression has asked the council to have a public hearing on the matter. City leaders reluctantly agreed to consider setting up a hearing. Police have been opposed in the past to having citizens on a police review board because they feel most people don't know enough about police work to know what should and should not be done on the job. While the Alliance is focusing on problems of alleged police misconduct, it says most officers don't understand the group's purpose. Most officers don't understand or don't know what the provisions of the Police Oversight Board are. We have requested an opportunity to speak with the uh, Fraternal Order of Police, the Police Officers Union. Uh, we received a response yesterday saying that they would be happy to discuss with us our proposal. So we believe that once the police officers see uh, what the pro proposal is all about, uh, including uh, proper training for them, uh, including um, provisions which would uh, protect their rights, their due process rights, somewhat like a police officer's uh, bill of rights, and I think that we, they would come along and support the Police Oversight Board. Oklahoma City Police Chief Lloyd Gramling did not want to comment on camera about the possibility of creating a new review board. Chief Gramling did say he's definitely in favor of ways to improve community and police relations. It's going to take some convincing in the department that a police oversight board is necessary. Several officers have gone so far as to say they would consider quitting if a citizen's review board is ever approved. Ed Stewart, Action 4. The halls at the state capitol were filled with the music from the nearly 3,000 senior citizens who filled the rotunda on Wednesday. The seniors came from all across the state for a very visible and vocal testimony to their existence as the largest single interest group in the state, with potentially the most power. But the senior citizens wouldn't confine themselves to just the rotunda, even if the rotunda could hold them all. Small groups broke off from the cluster and roamed the capitol halls, visiting individual offices and bringing individual messages to their own representatives. In return, the state hosted group discussions and seminars on things that especially concerned the elderly, with advice from utility company spokesmen on how to save energy and money, and tips from state lawmakers on how the law can best serve them. This is the fifth year that the Capitol has hosted the senior citizens, and it most assuredly won't be the last. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, at the state Capitol. This is the Oklahoma Land and Cattle Company. Dick Wetzel is president. He's been with the ranch 27 years. The operation involves up to 30,000 cattle. If the Oklahoma Beef Commission is created, 
This company would be required to pay 25 cents to a promotion fund for each head sold. And I think it just gives those who are producers a chance to promote their industry. Senator Gilmer Capps, a cattleman from Snyder, was one of the co-authors of the bill. And it doesn't put state money into it. It's, uh, it's the producers that are doing it. And another provision that I like, and I don't think I could vote for uh, this type of legislation if we didn't allow a producer to withdraw their money. In other words, we're not forcing a person to put money into it if he doesn't want to. He can, he can get a refund the same as he can with the, with the Wheat Commission and uh, Peanut and Pecan Commission. Senator Capps and Wetzelfield, the majority of cattlemen in the state, know that their product needs to be better promoted. Governor Nye is expected to sign the bill within the next two weeks. Some minor technicalities are now being worked out, and if approved, the commission will go into effect October 1st. Ben McCain, Action 4. To many of us, the space shuttle represents America and its dreams. Six, five, four, we've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. To one woman, the space shuttle is a dream come true, a dream that has meant three long years of physical and mental training. Because this woman, Shannon Lucid, is an astronaut for the spaceship Columbia. My job assignment right now is to learn about rendezvous and proximity operations. This means when the shuttle comes up close uh, to a payload and they want to uh, capture the payload to bring it back or they want to fly up close to payload to see what's going on. We had a year's worth of training when we first went down there and then we were assigned to these various jobs rotating around so we'll learn all about the shuttle and the shuttle systems. Shannon's not sure when she'll get to fly in the shuttle. She's one of 80 astronauts trained for the task. But when her time does come, she says she'll be ready. Sherry Sellers, Action 4. The Oklahoma City Zoo has hundreds of animals on display. They eat all day, which produces a lot of byproducts. Starting at 8 a.m. is free to the public. There is a hill of animal donations, seasoned long enough to kill the natural scent of what's being called zoo Every year, the zoo gets calls from organic gardeners, uh, especially near the zoo, uh, who wonder what we do with all this stuff. Uh, I think they would just like to say that they have something from the zoo on their garden. But this year, uh, to make it easier on ourselves, we put this pile out here eight months ago and let it completely compost. And then this Saturday morning, we're going to give it all away. We've got elephant and rhino and gazelle and antelope in this pile. After they've come to the zoo and uh, picked up a pile of this endangered feces, uh, I'm sure they would claim it's the best stuff they ever used. You are responsible to bring your own shovel and be warned the zoo won't last long. Of course, it helps if you bring a container to haul away the super fertilizer. But the trunk of your car will do. Ed Stewart, Action 4, Oklahoma City Zoo. <laughs>
It was obvious to those first crews on the scene that they were going to need help on this one. The fire had spread to the roof from the apartments below. Six units were being consumed by flames, so a second alarm was called. In places, there was nothing but fire. It took close to an hour to bring it under control. No one was hurt, but residents wished they had more of a warning. Just three guys drove by and knocked on our door and told us there was a fire downstairs, and that was it. And we grabbed what we could, and that was all before the smoke got too heavy and we couldn't breathe anymore. It's hard to say what's left, you know. The six units, along with their contents, are a total loss. Smoke and water damage to other nearby apartments was heavy. No damage estimate is available yet, but officials say it will be high. Investigators on the scene early this morning still don't know what caused the blaze. The damage is so extensive, they may never know what caused it. They're just glad that everyone got out safely. Ted Brown, Action 4, Northwest Oklahoma City. Last year, 72 people died on Oklahoma roads in alcohol-related accidents. In many cases, it was the innocent person that was the victim. In recent months, local and state authorities have attempted to crack down on drunken driving, but current laws often make their efforts futile. The way it works now, motorists picked up for driving under the influence can keep their license until legally convicted. They can also refuse the breath test and request instead a blood analysis. But a blood sample takes time and is often not finished before the alcoholic content of the driver's blood has decreased below the legal limit. Lawmakers are now pushing for a change in the penalties. Thank <laughs> you. 